Welcome, world, back to the weekly soulcast. I am your host, Laura Fade of the 12-Bit Monk, and I'm here with my co-host, Merc Merc Warren. And today we're going to discuss Kamala Harris's family tree, and I definitely have some opinions on this video right here that we're about to go over. So, without any further ado, let's get it. Let's get it. Right. Today, I'm going to show you the family tree of Kamala Harris, a prominent U.S. politician from a mixed race family. I'll also be talking about the terms race and ethnicity and how they come into play when researching one's family tree. Now, it is my contention it ain't as much Afro-American or Afro in this family tree as this documentary pretends. Kamala's father is Donald Harris. He was born in Jamaica, but immigrated to the U.S. where he became a professor of economics at Stanford University. According to Professor Harris, the two individuals who had the biggest influence on him during his upbringing in Jamaica were his two grandmothers, known as Miss Chrissy and Miss Iris. Miss Chrissy owned and operated a dry goods store. In okay, I, I want to stop right here. I was mistaken. I thought that those two people up there were his parents, but apparently, well, I guess they are his parents. The problem I got with that being his parents is if you look, both of them are solidly chocolate. <laughs> and if you look at Mr. Donald Harris, <laughs> as a matter of fact, let's take a look at Mr. Donald Harris. This is Professor Donald Harris. Now, I'm not saying the brother don't got no Afro in him. I'm just saying <laughs> he looked like a half breed to me. What do you think about that? I ain't trying to be, you know, too critical or whatever, but he kind of, kind of like Barack Obama a little bit, kind of favor him, you know? You know what? Like it could That's be his great. uncle or something. That's a great observation right there. I'm not trying to be critical. I just want to be mm -hmm. truthful and honest. And what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say is in an effort to portray Kamala Harris as blacker than she is, they pull little tricks like this. They show you two chocolate people that made this guy right here. And I'm telling you that ain't possible. Not with that laid down hair like that. So that's my <laughs> opinion. So, you know, it, take it for what it's worth. We're going to go ahead on and get back into what we was into. In Brownstown. The name Brownstown comes from its founder, he got Hamilton two Brown, Ramos, an Irish least. slave owner, who, according to Donald, was an ancestor of Chrissy Brown. This fact made the rounds last year, when several far-right media outlets tried to make Kamala Harris look like a hypocrite by claiming that her Jamaican ancestors were a bunch of slave owners. Here's the thing. Like I mentioned in my video on Barry Gordy, most black Americans have at least one white male somewhere on their family tree. The dispute is not whether she has one white male on her family tree. I think we both can agree. We look farther back in our family enough. We're going to find a white person. Probably ain't got to look that far either. Right. But what they, what they talking about is that her white ancestry is slave owners. That's the part that they're trying to get tricky with. And that's what I mean. You know, they say right wing people are dishonest and saying certain things about her. But how honest is that? They just said in this thing themselves that some of her ancestors were slave owners. So, yeah. I mean, now they're trying to say that every black person can trace their heritage back to a slave owner. Mm. I don't think so. Because here's a fact. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What percentage of white people do you think own slaves during slavery, during the height of slavery? Mm, I don't think it was a big, big number. I would say maybe, let's just throw 25% out there. All right, 25% sound like it's conservative, but you know what the actual answer is? What is it? 5%. Wow. 5% of white people was slave owners, that include all slave owners. Now, wow. how in the world, if only 5% of white people own slave, can every black American trace their heritage back to a slave? 
Yeah, that would mean oh. that it was some black Americans that were just black Americans. They were not part, you know, they were not slaves. Right. And even if you had white ancestry, they weren't slave owners. See, that's the difference yep. between Kamala Harris and most black people. But let's continue yep. with the documentary here. Because yep. of the sad fact that during the period of American slavery, slavers often raped females whom they enslaved. But this doesn't change the fact that far more people on their tree were likely on the other side of that equation as enslaved individuals of African descent. So keep in mind, the stat is 5% of white people. So even if what he's talking about occurred on a, a, a large scale amongst slave owners, that's still 5% of the Amer white population. So oh, how these facts are supposed to make Kamala look bad is beyond me. Anyhow, let's now look at the other side of her family. Her mother is Shyamala Gopalan. She was born in Chennai, India, but like Donald, immigrated to the U.S. The two actually met during their graduate Shyamala. studies at UC Berkeley, and they were both involved in the U.S. civil rights movement. But whereas Donald oh. studied economics, Shyamala studied medicine. I need to stop here again. Check this out. Donald is lighter skinned than the Indian lady. Yeah. But both his parents was black. All right. And became a cancer <laughs> researcher. As I mentioned in my recent video on the Marathas, India is more of a continent than a country. And therefore, there's not really a single ethnicity known as Indian. In Shyamala's case, it would be more accurate to say that her ethnicity was Tamil. This means that ethnically, Kamala is half Tamil. However, according to Kamala herself, she primarily identifies simply as black, which. And there is my problem. Brings me to the topic of race and ethnicity. Let's look at the term ethnicity first. Generally speaking, ethnicity refers to a people group that lived in a particular region for a long period of time and thus ended up sharing a common language, history, and culture. Nowadays, DNA testing companies claim to give people an ethnic breakdown of their ancestry. But really, what they're doing is just using a set of genetic samples from around the world to estimate the regions that a person's ancestors likely came from. So in this sense, ethnicity has also come to mean regional genetic variation, and thus has at least some sort of basis in science. The important thing to keep in mind, though, is that the total number of ethnic groups existing in the world today numbers in the hundreds, if not thousands. And the exact way in which all the various ethnic groups are divided and named will vary depending on which research team is doing the work. Race, however, is something different. According to most experts today, race is simply a social construct and has no real basis in science. Although I don't really disagree hmm. with that because there's only one race and that's the human race. Though that's people right. have tr I mean, you agree or disagree? I agree. Tried, you cannot scientifically determine race by grading skin tone, by measuring skulls, or by testing blood. The closest thing you can get to race by using genetics is to simply organize ethnic groups by continent. So, for example, we can say that a person has primarily European ancestry, African ancestry, Asian ancestry, etc. But even there, it gets complicated because genetic variation doesn't always match neatly with continental lines. For You know what? All this right here is to try to explain why. Kamala Harris is blacker than she is. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to show you a little something else. But while I'm showing you this, what are your uh, feelings on what you just saw? I'm feeling like, um, I know it's making me want to, you know, climb a little deeper in the rabbit hole and see what I can find. You know what I mean? I'm wanting to see what we, what we're not actually able, being able to see, you know, <laughs> I can't really say how I'm trying to say it, but I'm just wanting to see how far this is going to go with. Okay. With, 
well, with the trickery and stuff, you know. I, I, I got you, man, and I think I understand what you're trying to say. But I want to watch a little something, and I think you know okay. what that is. Uh oh. Ugh. Is it respectful to call? Like, I should be calling you Senator Harris, no, right? No, you should not. That's not on my birth certificate. Okay. No. Call, Comma. Call me, yes, please. Okay, because the Indian in me, I feel like my parents, <laughs> my dad will watch this. Just don't call me auntie. Okay. Nah. Huh? She said Indian in me, and she said just don't call me auntie. How you gonna be auntie to an Indian lady and you black? But anyway. Let's keep <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, how could you call her by her first name? She's worked so hard. Okay, so what we're gonna cook today okay. is well, an Indian recipe. Yes. Because yes. you are Indian. Yes. yes. Okay, and okay. I don't know that everybody knows that. Now, did you hear that? I know people who watch my channel are gonna get tired of me running this clip, but that lady is agreeing that she is Indian. Now, they, they tried to show you that trick knowledge on that documentary that we was looking at about how black she is but on this thing right here she not saying she black she telling this indian woman don't call me auntie she's saying so, yeah. that you indian and i don't think everybody knows that so let me ask you this then this is just a question that's kind of popping up um you have many people that have one color parent and another color parent like you know two different color parents could they not claim both sides? I mean, let's just say you part white and you part black. Yeah. Okay. When you go to the, the white side of the family, I mean, can you not technically be less family because you, you know, you got a white mom or whatever? Or if you go you to the like black this. side of the family, would you be less black because you got a black dad? You know what I'm saying? So what, what does it all kind of come together or fall apart at? You know what I mean? Well, what we talking about right now is something that I've got experience in because I have a biracial child. Okay. So as far as they're concerned, whatever mm -hmm. they choose to identify with, that's what they are. So if she wants to say that she's black, she can be black because she has 26 of my, 23 of my chromosomes and 23 chromosomes from her mother. Mm -hmm. Now she can claim her mother's ethnicity if she want to, and she can be that. But the truth of the matter, as I see it is, they're their own thing because you can't mm -hmm. take green and yellow and mix it together and get either green or get either yellow. You get a totally different color. So that's mm -hmm. really what's going on here. But socially, the social construct as to why anything with any black blood in them is called black is because mm -hmm. white people don't claim them. That's the problem. So let me ask you this then, all right? Mm -hmm. um, being that they can pick which one they want to be, mm -hmm. what if they decide to get tired of being this one day and they decide they want to be the, another one, the other side because I guess it's more uh, in style. Then a year or two go by, can they keep flip-flopping and it be legal? Let me ask you. Are they <clears throat> half one and half the other yes they are then they can claim whatever they want to claim in between the two they can be in between the two they can say i'm not black or i'm yep. not the other they can say yep. i'm black and be black yep. they can say i'm yep. the other and deny they're black if they want to that's a choice that they have yep. but let me go back to the beginning of what i was saying there's only one race the human race and we spend that's so right. much time trying to classify people and put people where we want them to be. And I think they should simply be allowed to be what they want to be. But here's the problem. That's right. It's only the white European side that will not allow a person mixed with anything else to just be white. Right. Give you another yeah. example. I watch these things sometimes, little videos on, uh, Jap half Japanese and half black people. Right. Japanese the same way. They don't see mixed people as Japanese. They're nah, going to they always don't. see them as black, but they're just yep. as Japanese as they are black. That's right. So that's the point. It's people's prejudices and hangups that really give a biracial person trouble in the world because yep. technically they should be able to be both. Yep. 
They should be invited into the white family, just like they are into the black family. Yep. But my problem with Miss Kamala Harris is she claims whatever it is that's convenient for her to claim. And now that she's trying to get elected, we're talking about this black lady, this black this, this black that. But when she get in front of the Indian people, I'm Indian. I grew up Indian. I ate these Indian dishes. I dressed in the traditional Indian garb. So what does that make her being is once it gets on like a world stage type type uh type uh situation, what does that make her? I mean, is it is it is she legal to do that just as much as somebody else would be that's not in politics? Yes. Okay. But here's the difference. What are your intentions? Okay. See, that's the point. If you do that and you do that because you really have a love for black culture and you really understand black culture. You grew up in black culture then claim that. That's right. But if you think that black culture is Megan the stallion twerking, then I got a problem with you trying to use that because that's not our culture. Right. I think you should be able to be whatever you want to be, but at the same <laughs> time, I think you should be respectful. And you should have good intention. Trust me when I tell you, Kamala Harris did not want to be known as black. She only want to be black to get the minority vote. It's it's like it's like a white person claiming a black ancestor to go to a HBCU because it's cheap. I can prove I got black ancestry, so I should be allowed to go to a historically black college. It's cheaper than other colleges. So that's yeah. what I mean that person only wants to claim that blackness when it's advantageous to them, not when it's okay. not advantageous. And that's Kamala okay. Harris. Okay. I'm right with you on that. I feel that. I feel that for real. But what yeah. do you think about that? I think you're right on the money. I don't think it's cool for somebody to, um, to at this point of the game, be able to do that choose a side and let us decide what we want to vote for. That's how I feel. You know, well, I mean, if you both of them say that you both of them don't just claim one, you know what I mean? It's just like that. Which one is this? Which one is that? Is, okay. that the black, is that the black Kamala Harris right there? No, nah, that ain't right there. Right. So nah. my point is when she is coming up, on her own time, how much black is she identifying with right there? But I mean, that could be just that she just showing respect for that side of the culture. You know, that could be that. Could Cause be. you can see, yeah, I mean, we just gonna get, I'm not gonna, I ain't gonna crucify her now, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. Could I have be. a lot of, uh, yeah, that, that could be what that is. But at the same time, just like you said, you know, got to stand up to the plate and let us know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of, if you're really trying to get the minority vote, you need to keep, you need to keep it clean and come correct to us, man. That's how you had to do it. What I'm saying is you just said it. She's showing respect to that side, right? Fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how much respect you showing for black people when you only claiming that, when you run for office, I haven't That's the seen. Thing. Listen, I haven't heard her say, uh, I'm Kamala Harris. Uh, I'm representing the Asian nations and I'm also representing the African nations. Simple. She ain't paying no respect to the Indian while she running. It's just right. black. Right. So that's my problem with that, man. Right. It should be that simple though. How you said it. I'm this, but I'm, I'm representing this and this and boom, you know, but maybe that ain't so popular to get the votes that you're looking to get, you know? No, it ain't popular to get the votes you're looking to get. Yeah. So, you know, that's pretty much what I'm saying. I, I don't, I'm saying let's vote for her on the merits of what she can do, what she's capable of. Um, uh, her experience, uh, what has she done to, you know, help people 
not just black people, just people. What has she done? But 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 nevertheless, help life. black people too now. <laughs> well, you know, you're a big proponent on helping, you know, black people. And I get that. I don't have a problem. But that's not what this young lady is about here. No. No. Let's let let's let how about we start with remember her honesty, right? Let's okay. see how honest okay. the lady is. Let, let's start with okay. her integrity. You know, that's what you call wouldn't you want your leader to be honest and have some integrity? They should be the epitome of that for the country of honesty and integrity. All right. Well, let's see what Kamala's saying. Back before okay. she became vice president, Kamala Harris did a puff piece with Elle magazine. And in that st story, she told the tale of going to a civil rights march with her parents and getting upset after she fell from her stroller. Now, the article has Kamala Harris telling the story like this. My mother tells me about how I'm fussing, Harris says. And she's like, baby, what do you want? What do you need? And I just looked at her. This is Kamala Harris speaking. And I said, freedom. <laughs> now, a lot of observers at the time noted that this sounded awfully like a story Martin Luther King Jr. had told to Playboy magazine way back in 1965. Back what? in the days when Playboy was not only a magazine, but also, <laughs> yes, worth reading for the articles. What? In the piece, King said, I will never forget a moment in Birmingham when a white policeman accosted a little girl, seven or eight years old, who was walking in a demonstration with her mother. What do you want? The policeman asked her gruffly, and the little girl looked him straight in the eye and answered, Feedum! She couldn't even pronounce it, King said, but she knew. It was beautiful. Now, what do you think? Is that coincidence that Kamala was at the thing and she said, Feedum? Or does that sound like a story that been ripped off from somewhere? <sighs> Kamala, I mean, Kamala. what's your honest opinion? Sound like she re, re, regenerated the story to fit her, you know, sound like it to me. Do, does it? Well, let's continue. Let's look a little bit at her record a little bit. Let's look at uh -oh. these clips. Let's look at these clips. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Senator Harris says she's proud <laughs> of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. I want you to think deeply on what she just said. You blocked man. evidence that would have freed a man on death row and didn't God. release the information until you were forced to do so. So wow. how do you think this person values human life? She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place. That now, kept people incarcerated to use them as cheap labor so what do you think she think remember that song ice cube hat this is what they think about you well that's what kamala mm -hmm. thinks about you man it's it's almost like it's flabbergasting man you know you can't really you know you you want to sometimes you want to have like you know you want to kind of give more than one take you have small debates but when you spitting truth out like that and it's like blatant you know what what can you debate <laughs> what can you debate i mean it's like it's like it's right there in in live and vivid color just you know man and me i'm not rich I, i'm not no you know anybody that gets in no trouble and stuff like that either you know with the law and you know but at the same time let's say i was Am I not going to get a fair shake? Well, imagine that that was your father that you was expecting to come home. Imagine that if you In were a, a years, female she get, who has yeah. a young child that you need help with out here, that she's keeping people to use them for cheap labor, not thinking about. So that's what I mean. 
how can you be president when you have no compassion for people? That's right. Now, I don't want to mention her opponent's name, but, and he's done a right. lot of things that's unsavory too. And I sit up here saying that he don't have no sins to bear. Right. But I am saying, I just don't think she's better than he is. I really don't, man. I feel so, like the best person, I pray to God, let the best person for the job win. That's what I feel like. Well, I feel that there's a, a agenda that's being played out. I initially thought when she was made vice president to Biden, that they mm -hmm. was going to kill Biden because he was so old and make it look like he died of natural causes and just boot her into the presidency that way. But apparently they slicker than I thought they was. You they sure just let right. him peter out and just pushed her on up in there. Yep. She got the natural nomination. She didn't have to stand in front of nobody. She didn't have to uh, uh, account for her record or anything like that. And just like the video we just saw, she didn't have to go through that this time because if she did, they know nobody would vote for her. So obviously they want her in, dude. So I don't have no confidence that anybody's gonna win but her. I think it's a plan. I think it's an agenda. And I think it's an agenda that is gonna weaken this country and make us more morally corrupt. And I think that they're gonna champion a lot of agendas that people think they may want, but it's going to be detrimental for this country. What's your thoughts? I, I'm, I'm just going to say it like this. I think a weak president is going to make this country vulnerable. Um, other countries that have been licking their chops to cripple us in their own certain way. We're going to have to have some strong leadership. I'm not saying her. I'm not saying him. I'm just saying we're going to have to have some strong leadership. And well, I pray to God, you know, give us what we need. Your only choices are her and him. So, you know, one of them, Who you? one of them, I think is better at foreign policy simply because of the way that they handled China when they dealt with mm -hmm. China. Mm -hmm. They were wanting China to play fair instead of getting the advantage. Democrats have a habit of selling us out to other countries for their own benefit. I just, yeah, I thought about something. Me and uh one of my friends, we had a little discussion earlier in the week and um it was concerning Democrats and Republicans. And I just thought about like I I, I talked to my mom and I was like who decided for you know and I'm from the south, you know who decided for black people that we supposed to vote democratic every time it's time for an election? Why has it always been something that just, oh, y'all vote democratic. Make sure you vote for the Democrat, vote for the Dem I hadn't seen, I'm, I'm not, I remember I was a little kid when Jimmy Carter was about to come up out of the presidency. I was a little boy, I remember that. And I, I, I'm trying to figure what have Democratic presidency done for, you know, lower class Black America since I've been living. I, I'm trying to, I, I've been trying to find and you know just see what what was the main thing that they did for us. And every well, time I, I look, what they did. what's that? They called us super criminals, right? And they came up with the harshest sentences for Black people ever in history. Yep when crack came out. Yep. Bill Clinton let secrets escape, allegedly, to China on our tanks. Yep. Some of our electronics. I remember that uh, it was hard on black people when Reagan got in because uh, he was economically tough. And it took a while for the country to turn around from the way that we were being bullied by countries like China and countries like Russia. Yeah. So that brings me to another clip. This clip <laughs> is going to be based on performance. Now let's see how Kamala performs when you give her a job, right? Let's okay. check this out. 
we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border. We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and uh -huh. I haven't been to Europe. <laughs> we are going to the border. Now, We've, peep that. Let's <laughs> let's listen to it again. Been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border. We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. <laughs> and I haven't been to Europe. <laughs> oh, Brother, God. come on, man! Really? <laughs> they gonna elect this woman, man? And I'm gonna tell y'all right now: when they elect that woman, it's gonna be a satanic ritual. You're looking at the literal whore of Babylon. They gonna put her in there? You going in? I still, I still have faith in the American people, man. I still I have the faith people. that they gonna do. Go ahead. I think the majority of American people are not getting. We may come back and replay this video, but right now, I just don't feel like. I know that a lot of the, um, what is the news media and stuff put out certain narratives to where we think certain things, but I don't believe the majority of America is pro democratic or pro Kamala right now. I don't. I think you could have said that 10 years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> but trust me, we've had 15, 10, 15 years of eroding the moral fabric of the country, of allowing and tolerating things that should not be allowed nor tolerated. And I'm finna go off in a tangent right now. So you're gonna have to excuse me, bro. Let's get it. Let's go ahead. Do your thing. I'm listening. I think civil rights was a setup or was a plan the whole treatment of black people in this country was a setup okay. and it was a plan because when they went through the civil rights they controlled everything what rights we had all of this other stuff then they killed martin luther king and then they brought in lyndon johnson brought in the uh, whatever little policy he brought in that took the black man out of the black home it incentivized single motherhood and yep. since we were given rights they eroded our morals to the point where we would never be able to take advantage of those rights yeah so they in effect rolled us into control they it's a system of control right so yep. the same people the democratic party who if you search back in history were the party of the clan Think yep. about what I'm saying. The Democratic That's Party exactly was the party right. of the Klan. Exactly the Republican right. Party is the party that was the party of the abolitionists. That's right. So now they flipped it, just like the narrative that they flip about Mr. Trump, President Trump, yep. that he's racist, he hates minorities, and he's such a bad man. It's just a narrative. It's a psychological operation. But what I'm going with this is they use the template of civil rights to start bringing in sexual rights. So they treat sexuality like our ethnicity and they put yeah. it on the same level and they say that they should enjoy the same privileges that we enjoy. And that's the okie doke. That was the plan from the beginning. In order to get this agenda going, they had to give you this agenda. So now they build on top of that. So it started with Obama when he legalized yep. gay marriage. Yeah. Okay. Right. Next. Right before, notice when they did it. They did yep. it right before he got out of office. I mean, he yeah. had eight years. They eight. did it right before he got out of office. So it just I remember you... on Black History Month, he painted the colors of the LGBTQYZ crowd on the White House. Remember that? Man. They're yeah. telling you what they're doing, right? Okay. So yep. now you got homosexuality no problem legal got all of the civil rights they want what was next yep. trans people mm. then they start pushing that yep. idea and they yep. start saying that now you can pick what gender you want to be when there's only two yep. sexes you can only be male or female at birth that's right you either xx or you xy <clears throat> so what makes also what make female and males different is their uh bone density 
and the female hip structure, which is structured to bear children. A person mm. can find you 5 million years from now and know whether you were a man or a woman, but a person today can't tell you what a woman is. Yeah. So that was the next thing that they got going is trans rights, right? And it's all built off yep. the template of civil rights. Remember that. Yep. What's next? Well, they tell you, hey, kids under the age, yep. little kids, mm -hmm. no matter what age, mm -hmm. they say three, four, five, six, can decide whether they're male or female. Male or whether female. Whether they want to yep. be whatever they want to be, right? So kids are deciding what their sex is going to be, right? Right. Every file in the world ears just stood up because they said, oh, well, if a child can choose to be a sex, why can't they choose to have sex? So the next pillar that they're going to try to legalize is PDF files. So that's what I'm saying, man. It's all in or, the and she's part of it, dude. She's part of it. They're going to legalize a lot of this stuff when she's in office. They're going to use her to do it. She's not smart enough to be your president. So she says anything intelligent is from her handlers. Now, what man. do you think about what I just laid out? Man, what a mouthful. It's the soul podcast, you. baby. It's the soul it podcast. It sure is. It's a, man, it's like you can't. I mean, I done been, I done been in several debates, several debates. It's the first time I done been this quiet in a long time. So, That's because I talk too much. Nah, nah, it ain't got nothing to do with that at all. You just spin some facts, man. And it's like when you spin cold, hard facts, when you spin the truth, people usually get quiet. I, I can't do nothing but be quiet. I'm, it's the truth, you know, so. Where are you lying at? That's all I'm going to say. I, somebody else will have to show me where you lying at because I ain't seeing it. It's just uh, frustrating to see that people so... But let me tell you, you want to know why people close their minds and hearts off to the truth? And why is that? They can't see... Because you notice you and I can look at the same thing and we can see it totally different. But you mm -hmm. know why people support degenerate behavior? Why is that? Because they want to practice degenerate behavior in other yep. words if i know you're gonna let me do my freaky stuff then i'm gonna let you do your freaky stuff and i'm gonna support the person that's gonna let both of us do our freaky stuff that's right i don't want nobody telling me no that's what that's what i was going yep i'm sorry that's what's going on with the with the alphabet click they and don't want so, nobody telling them that they wrong. They don't want nobody telling them that what they doing wrong. They know what they know. We ain't going to even go the there, thing. but they people will hear what I said. And they'll say, well, he hates this certain group of people. Nope. I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. No, nope. I want to make nope. this perfectly clear. America. I Me hate too. the behavior. That's what I hate. I don't hate people. I love everybody. I think everybody should be able to do what they want to do. It's not my job to tell you how to live. It's my job to tell you what I think is going to happen to you. If you decide to live the way you're going to live, yep. but you have free will, but everything has an accounting, everything. Yep. And I have to account for all the wrong I did in my life. I got to account for that. Whether you, support me or you don't support me i gotta count for yep. it yeah that's the same way with everybody in the lifestyle that they choose to lead the reason yep. why i say the things i say is because i love the person the person in yep. there that's misguided that's been lied to that's been told mistruths their whole life and now they have a certain belief system based on those mistruths it's what's wrong with the women in the in the country today you know, yep. women used to be smart enough to know that a man's place and his status came with good and bad. So they were content enough to let the men take the bullets. An example of that is, you know, women were not allowed to have credit in the okay. not so distant past. Right. But you know what they did have? What's that? 
their husband's credit. So you know what they could yep. do? Yep. They could go to the store, go charge, charge up whatever well, they want to yep. charge up on the yep. husband's dime. Who was That's responsible right. for paying it? The man or the woman? The man. The man was, yep. But now they look at it like that was being oppressed. When all we was doing was guarding you from your own nature. Everybody yep. has checks and balances on their behavior. So now they have credit. And guess what? Now they're in debt. And you can look at a woman's spending versus a man's spending. And you can see right now they carry much more debt than we do. That's why they appeal to women in these commercials. That's why every commercial come on geared towards selling a woman something. Yep. Most of it. Look, daytime television. All them soap operas is, is emotional drugs to get them hooked so that they can play them commercials and sell women stuff. That's it. Oh, don't don't even mention the um the little shows, the the um what's them love and hip hop type shows. Oh yeah. Oh, that's don't crazy. mention those, man. Well, you see, know, it's like it's like them shows are put out to push a narrative that we supposed to just magically well we go by what the tv says now you know we i you know we just magically supposed to follow that and it's not it's not real a lot of them don't even live the, the way that the tv had them doing oh, they acting they say That's it's right. um they acting man they say it's uh reality but it's scripted. right but listen what is it called it's literally called a program that's right they're programming Pro you with their idea of what culture is. That's why I say black people in America have no culture. We don't have a culture. Hip hop, it's not a culture. It's degeneracy. And I got to say, I make hip hop, but people don't want to listen to it because everything I've been talking about, the way I've been talking on this video is the way I talk on my song. And people don't want to hear that. It ain't about, you know, your baby mama. It ain't about your dope. It ain't about your your rims. It ain't about your party, your clothes. They don't want to hear gangsterism, the killing. It ain't about the gangsterism. About and, and I got to say, they have turned hip hop into a ritualistic murder cult. That's right. That's what it is. It's a murder cult. It's well. Totally let, wait a minute. Let, let's take it back. Control. We didn't. We didn't say that right. They ain't turned hip hop into that. They done turned trap rap into a murder murderous culture because well, it's still hip hop turned, was out there. They like turn they turn um, entertainment into that urban entertainment. Yep, entertainment, not just urban entertainment. Yep. Do you remember yep. in the eighties and all the way up to now, all the satanic rock guys that's out there? Yeah, I remember Think a lot about, of them. Now. All right, think about. Even hip hop, I'm gonna bring hip hop into it. Think about your hip hop album covers and how much satanic imagery is on them now. Hip hop, yeah, not just trap, hip hop. You want me it's to tell satanic. you what? It's like, and I think a lot of us have been victims of this. We thought that putting guns and skulls and you know blazing fire and all of that type of stuff on your album cover was like you know something that'll get people's attention to make them want to but like you said you know once you done got some age on you and you get to looking it looked like it's kind of demonic man a little bit you know it look a little demonic it's like you know even though you might not have made it intentionally to be the money you just was trying to use it for shock value you know you think about all the 80s rappers and stuff everybody had tough names and nobody had no little sweet names or whatever everybody was tough everybody was hard everybody was gangsters you know what i'm saying but the thing about it is we had a code you know Everybody lived by a code. I was a little kid watching the 80s guys, you know, and like I said, everybody lived by a code, man. It's it like- It was an art form that was born strictly in America. 
So while I yep. say black people have no culture, the closest thing to it would be hip hop because it's something yep. that was born here and it was given birth to by your urban community. And your urban yep. community is predominantly black. That's right. But they got in and corrupted it early. I remember it used to be about the party, getting together, yep. throwing a DJ out there, man, at the park, or you rent a rec center and you threw yep. a party, right? And it was all about dancing. It was some drinking and there was some smoking going on. A little and bit of break dancing to against sex, each other. But a little know. bit of break dancing. And when NWA came out, they changed all that. That's when the yep. Satanism kicked it up about five notches because it brought yep. the gang culture. And then all of a sudden you would rent the event, have the party, and then the gang members show up and shoot everything up. Or they fighting. Well, there is no fighting. Well, back in the day, well, back in the day, they didn't used to shoot so much. It was a lot of hand throwing back then, you know. It was, but after NWA came out, and this was in 89, <laughs> shooting was happening. <laughs> so you got kids that wasn't even born in 89 that's alive today. So all they know is the Satanism and the shooting stuff up. So that's why I say right now, hip hop is a murder cult right now. Mm -hmm. If you want to change it, do what you can to change it. I do what I can to change it. I put out what I consider to be the word of God. I, that's what I put in what I'm talking about. I, I want to save people's soul. I'm not concerned with your earthly situation. It's mm -hmm. what we do here determines where we go. That's why I say I don't hate people. I hate the behavior, man. So. You know, that's it where also I'm from, and that's why I think it's so bad and so detrimental for us to elect Kamala Harris because it's something that feel ritualistic about it. It's something that feel evil about it. It's something that feel off. It's something that feel like the coronation of prophecy. It you feel know, that's what forced. it feels like to me. It feel forced. It's the same agenda. way that the same way that the media pushes all these different alternate lifestyles on us with through um uh, music and movies and these uh like you say reality tv shows and all of that it just feels forced and you, you know, know what you know what an alternate lifestyle is also what's that a woman deciding to have kids without being married first that's an yeah. alternative lifestyle yep yep that, yep that that you know i was talking to a friend of mine today Mm -hmm. And we was discussing, we was discussing some of the behavior of some of our young ladies in that they will have a stable relationship with a guy and then just break their whole home up for God knows why, I guess because they got this social media and the hug. I can tell you. Well, why? I can tell you why. Why? Let me get close to the camera so you can see this right well, here. Well, you blur it a little bit. Okay. Most of the time when those relationships just break up or somebody decide they just want to branch off and do their own thing, it done made the relationship about them. A relationship is supposed to be about you guys together collectively. When you make, when you take a relationship and you make it only about you being selfish or whatever, but and you make it only about you, then you can see where you can, you know, a person could possibly uh, just drop a good marriage, a good life, a good home, and just want to go out here and relive their teenage years or whatever. They make it about themselves. It's selfishness. They use that emotion and they get selfish, and that's what it is. That's all it is, selfishness, man. You, you know, know what? That's profound. I think you're absolutely right on that because I really couldn't put yeah. my finger on why a woman, if she says she loved her kids, would get rid of their father, put their father out of the house. And they did and then tell the narrative that he left. Yes, he left because you forced him out. They yeah, with, you forced him out with help now. Legally. Oh, yeah. Let's use that word. Right. legally you legally used help to force him out and then you make it look like it was all him and it wasn't 
and you know it's it's I'm just crazy saying, i'm just saying in order for us in order for black people to truly be strong in this country we're gonna have to start with families man we're gonna have to start with a man picking a woman and a woman picking a man and them having children and educating those children i believe children should be homeschooled i don't believe they should be sent to public education Man, I'm 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 getting to that same. I we're gonna talk about that off here, but right. I'm, I'm starting to feel I'm feeling that same thing, man. Because when you send them to the governmental schools, they get indoctrinated. But when you yeah. educate them, it's education from love. You know these people. You care about these people. You really want to see them do well. So you have no choice but to educate them correctly, and and yeah. they they don't experience all of the social temptations to where they 14 and they baby mamas and they baby daddies. What about this? The only problem with that though, this is the only problem that, that like, and, and, you know, me and my spouse, we talk about it and this is how I look at it too. She, you know, she made me look at this side of the coin. I was looking at it like you would, you know, you know, homeschooling probably is the best thing for them, you know, and it can kind of block them from certain stuff. But fast forward to they 18 or 19 and they finally get pushed out here to end with. You prepare them. You prepare them to a certain extent, but without no, them no actually going through. Everything that you did, that mm -hmm. you had to run your head into the brick wall you already know about. You already know how to tell your son about what women to watch out for. You already can tell your son about how to move in certain situations. When you see this yeah. son, it's time to get up quietly, walk on up out of there. You yeah. can tell your daughter about what kind of man she should be pursuing. You you tell them. Now, that's not to say that they're going to do everything you say when they get out there, but exactly they, right. are, they will when they see, oh, daddy call that one like when your daughter get involved with a dude that's got all of the things that you said he shouldn't have and she get involved with him and she see it she'll be more likely to say i'm not putting up with that my daddy told me about that yep versus her growing up in it and not, no one ever telling her and that's how she learned how to deal with men is deal is is looking at people who only wanted her for her body and thinking that that's love See, yeah, that ain't no love it's right not there. it's not hard you you don't have to there's women tend to think you need to experience everything to learn something that's why they don't want to get married in their 20s because they want to get out here and have sex with as many people as they can experience as much as they can then when they get in their 30s they want to settle down and they want to have a family but all that does is devalue them out there on the market and it brings more trauma every time they get with somebody they get used they get done this person makes them feel that way this person makes them feel that way and we're not even going to talk about the std side of the game and black in the yeah. black community so i'm just saying man that's i get it i understand why she says what she says and what she but that's what that's why you report to god and she report to you and that's the right. kids report to her that's yep. why you spoke right. to have the wisdom enough to know how to lead it to her, baby. I understand what you're talking about and I feel why you're saying that, but let me tell you why that's not a great idea. Let me tell you why right. it's good to homeschool them and keep them from stuff like that. It doesn't make them dumb and stupid when they get out there. It actually makes them more prepared because they'll be looking at these people like, I can't believe she did that. I can't believe he did that. Believe you just want them listen. to be able to, you know, you just want them to be able to, um, know how to you know have practice knowing how to deal with people that's about the main that's to me that's probably the main thing that i i can see what a public school would do it, it just teach you how to deal with different a whole bunch of different well, people let me relate to you like this on the edge i just feel like on the education standpoint i don't see a like difference this. let me relate to you like this what if a woman right is mm -hmm. out here dating what mm -hmm. is she learning that's going to make her more valuable to the man that she ultimately winds up with by dealing with other men. What's she learn? Nothing. You said it like so, that. Nothing. So <laughs> what are they going to learn by dealing with these evil ass people 
that is going to make value to them when they finally start dealing with somebody. How to be more evil. So what I'm saying is you give them the knowledge. You've been there. You've seen it all. You tell them. They don't have to experience it. Kids are very intelligent and receptive. They like sponges and they listen. They listen on a subconscious level and they will make mistakes and they will not do everything you want them to do. But I'm just saying there's less trauma on them if you can get them to 18 without the scars that they're going to get in public school and let them get out yep. there and be a little bit awkward socially, maybe, but they won't have yep. all the scar. They'll be a better person by the time they get into college and start dealing with people. See, you listen to the female perspective. What a female will do is when 18, if she been sheltered, by the time she get to college, she get out there and be a hoe. That's how they think. So don't let that thinking stop you from doing what you have to do for your own little girl and letting her understand it. If you tell her that that's the cycle, it's a 50, 50 chance that she going to get out there and do that. Or she going to listen to you. Yeah. That's a better chance than her going through high school with these people and doing it anyway, having her whole phase. Yeah. So all I'm saying, you can't stop it. And dude, you might, you know, I'm not wishing it on you, but you might be raiding a serial killer right now. You don't know. Sometimes yeah. it ain't nothing you can do, but it ain't yeah. for lack of trying. And you pray to have God's favor on your family and you'll be protected. They'll be protected. That's what I believe But anyway, too. we're looking at 58 minutes and 33 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead, Woo! old man, and uh, we are going to get the hell out of here. This has been the weekly Okay. Yes, it With has. your host, Lord Fade of the 12 bit mark and Murk One. We just gonna be out. Gonna be right. Yeah. Ha, <laughs> ha,